We recently got introduced to Yao Yao, a new Dendro character that functions as a healing support. Because she was introduced alongside Al Haytham, however, her overall story might have been slightly overshadowed. Her story is actually very much intertwined with the Adepti and gives us a bit more of a look into the Adepti themselves. In fact, as you'll see, her log might give us an idea on why certain people receive visions and why the Adepti take on disciples. Before we get into that, if you want to see more Genshin Impact content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Yao Yao was actually not born in Liwei Harbor. A long time ago, her parents decided to move away from the hectic city and chose to live a rather secluded life in the mountains. They built their home near Qingse village and would live off of the land by themselves, only occasionally going back to the village if they need to. This is where Yao Yao was born. As she grew up, there were not that many people around her and so she took to making friends with nature. The animals, clouds, trees, rivers and rocks were all acquaintances of her and she would often spend time amongst them when not in the care of her parents. She would make this a habit of hers even if these largely inanimate objects or creatures could not respond to her directly. One day though, as she was speaking to the clouds and the rocks, surprisingly, they replied. Yao Yao was of course ecstatic and spent the whole day speaking to them about her feelings, her dreams and whatever else came to mind. By the end of this whole interaction however, the rocks and the clouds magically dissipated, much to the surprise of Yao Yao, and before her stood an Adepti in its full form. This Adepti turned out to be Madam Ping, or known better as Streetward Rambler. She took notice of Yao Yao as she seemingly had a penchant for the Adepti ways, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail a bit later. Madam Ping eventually convinced Yao Yao's parents to allow her to take Yao Yao as her disciple in order to train her. From then on, Yao Yao would spend much of her time with her new master who taught her everything from reading and writing to mastering the adeptal arts. She also passed on to Yao Yao her knowledge and skill in the use of the pole arm, which was the weapon Madam Ping herself had used. Yao Yao would occasionally return home to her parents and would go back and forth between her training and her home life. Now after a while, Yao Yao eventually brought up the courage to ask her master why she was chosen to receive adeptal training. In Li Wei, the Adepti were revered almost like gods, and to even see one in person was exceptionally rare, let alone receiving tutelage from one. At first, Madam Ping's responses were rather vague and mentioned that their destinies had entwined. She simplified it for Yao Yao's benefit and just said that they had things in common that allowed them to meet. In reality though, Yao Yao was considered to embody the beliefs of the Adepti. You see, while most Adepti are often misunderstood to only protect Li Wei, as enlightened beings, the scope of their protection also extends to all things within nature. The Adepti believe that everything has a natural flow, in that each object and person has a destiny they are meant to achieve. As long as they each grow and not encroach on each other, all beings will eventually achieve their true destiny. Yao Yao's penchant for treating everything in nature as her friends largely falls within the belief system all Adepti have, that is, to care for all things. This was the reason why Madam Ping took an interest in her as she had already embodied these beliefs through her actions even when she was really young. But that can't be the only reason, right? All this talk about intertwined destinies and fate actually makes me suspect there is something more. Something the Adepti, and by extension, the gods, are capable of but not something that has been properly revealed. A while back, I started to notice a pattern among those who received visions. While most of them had some strong ambition or goal they wished to achieve, there was an increasing number of candidates who didn't really fit this criteria. There were some who gained visions at a moment in their life where they couldn't have had much drive or ambition due to being either extremely young or just didn't know yet what they had wished to accomplish. Characters like Ayato, Tainari, and Farzan were those that come to mind. Initially, the number of Elogins who didn't follow this rule was small and it seemed as though they were more like outliers or exception to the rule. However, with the law revealed through Yao Yao, we might have some explanation as to why this is happening. 
In a past video, I theorized that for these types of individuals, the gods had granted them a vision not because of a dream they held at that very moment, but rather the potential they had in the future. In some of these cases, the only explanation I could think of was that the gods could either see their future potential or even their fates. It's not really something out of left field, considering a god of time did exist, and even talented humans like Mona and her master were capable of discerning the fates of others. So someone on the level of a god could likely use these abilities with far more accuracy and likely determine the fates of anyone they choose. With Yao Yao's story, I think we have yet another example of this. We are not really told the circumstances of how Yao Yao received her vision, and her vision lore talks more about the story after this event. After receiving a vision, she didn't really understand why she was granted one. Even as an external viewer, there doesn't seem to be anything that indicates she might be different in any way. Sure, she was a well-liked individual being trained by an adepti, but her rather young age makes me think that it's unlikely for her to have any strong convictions or desire to achieve something. So again, the question is why was she granted one? One thing in a story though that is occasionally repeated is her potential to be a great person in the future. Many among the adepti see her as someone with a lot of potential and despite her young age, has shown a lot of determination to embody the teachings of the adepti. Even Madam Ping outright states that she will be someone great in the future and is one of the reasons she took her in. I suspect that if it is indeed true that the gods can see the fates of others, Yao Yao likely has a very promising future that the gods were willing to grant her a vision this early despite her not having any specific goals at this time. They are likely aware of what she could potentially become and thus grant her this gift. Despite not knowing the true reason, upon receiving a vision, she now feels obligated to live up to what the vision stands for a divine acknowledgement of the gods. With more of this happening, I think the gods really are granting visions to those they know will end up to be great people one day, sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now alternatively, and a bit more outlandish, maybe the gods are granting visions with lower requirements because of something that might happen in the future. Perhaps something big is about to happen and they are bolstering their rank. Whether they are able to see into the fates or futures of other people or there is a looming threat over the horizon, we really don't know. What we do know is that this pattern has been increasing lately and Yao Yao seems to be the latest example of this. I mean, to be honest, I'm just theorizing here and perhaps the reason Celestia wants her up there with them is because she's just a nice person. In any case, let me know why you think she was given a vision in the comments below and that does it for this video. If you enjoyed it, do consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. As usual, have a nice day.